Okay folks, we're now in the shelter of a shed, um, still the 15th of April. Um, my hands are still purple with the cold. Talking a bit more in detail about stress on plants, because we've been asked a lot, um, what do I mean by stress on plants and how consequential is it to end result in terms of yield and that. These are two samples you would have seen earlier and we're talking about the winter barley. This is the full fertilised section of the crop and this is a piece that didn't receive its full nitrogen application because it was outside the width of the boom. So the differences are fairly obvious, fairly transparent, growth and reduced growth. But it's not just a shorter crop with, with less bulk to it and less active tillers. You're getting a lot of this at the top, which yes, it's a symptom of nitrogen deficiency, but what it actually is is stress on the plant, that the plant is allowing the lower leaves to die away, to take the nutrient reserves out of them, to continue to grow these younger leaves. Now, with nitrogen, it's a major nutrient. It's fairly obvious, we all know, if you don't put it on, you don't get the, the consequential yield development within the plant. Trace elements is something we talk about a lot. A lot of people wonder, do they really have as big a consequence? We were in a field earlier this morning. This is all the one crop, it's winter barley. Again, it's a hybrid, the variety is irrelevant. These three samples were all taken in no more than 10 feet of each other. And you went from a fairly well-developed crop um, nothing too visually wrong with it to a, a smaller piece of a crop starting to look a little bit paler not as developed in terms of tillers and you get right down to this where you're barely struggling to keep a plant alive and you only have if I tease it apart one stem with no tillers formed all that was wrong in that particular site and we have footage of it which we can show you that's manganese deficiency it's a little bit less clear than I'd like it to be today because the crops are a bit muddy because it's been spilling rain and it's hard to get the samples looking clear. But when people ask, why should we put on trace elements? Some people don't believe in them. That's a field that if it's showing that level of deficiency now where you've actually lost tiller production and you've lost plants, that field should have had a treatment of manganese in the autumn. At this stage, that field has got one and a half full applications of manganese, but you can see the consequence of it and what it's doing to reduce the yield potential. It all links into the theory of stress and we're specifically doing a little bit of talking about the appropriately positioned can of uplift in the background. We talk a lot about it. Look, we in Terrachem sell products, but we pride ourselves on trying to sell products that we think are beneficial to the customer. People have asked, what exactly is uplift? You're not saying it, it's a, a trace element per se. You're not saying it's for nutrition, but there's nutrient in it. There's NPK there's magnesium, there's boron, there's molybdenum, and there's manganese, copper, zinc. But all of those nutrients are in it to be complementary and enhance the, the other products that are, that are within the can. Originally, we focused on just pyroglutamic acid, PGA, or it's often called pedolic acid. Um, the older versions of Uplift just had pedolic acid with the nutrients. PGA, as people would have heard me talk about, enhance the plant's ability to get the nitrogen that's in the ground, take it out of the ground and utilise it to get growth. So it enhances growth and yield development. What's also in uplift is aspartic acid. Aspartic acid, without getting too in-depth, because it's probably beyond me at this stage anyway, I'm too long out of college, it's involved in the Krebs cycle. Now the Krebs cycle is involved in producing ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. And that's basically the cent central energy molecule within the plant. It's like putting petrol or diesel in the car. It's that simple. So by adding in aspartic acid, you're giving the plant more energy. You also have another compound called tryptophan. Tryptophan is a precursor to oxins. And oxins are involved in initiating root growth. So by putting those in, you stimulate more development of lateral roots and adventitious roots. And it also stimulates the development of the xylem. Now, the xylem are half of the tube system that's in the plant that bring water up and food down. So if you stimulate xylem de development, and again, to put it very roughly, if you have a half inch hydro air pipe and a quarter inch hydro air pipe, which carries more water? So if you stimulate develop the development of these tubes within the plant that bring the food up and down and the water throughout the plant, you you'll enhance growth. What's also in it is a compound called R100, which is actually patented by the manufacturer and it actually stimulates cytokinin development so that's stimulating the production of leaves and shoots but it also has a lot of other beneficial effects within the plant it stimulates again the uptake of nutrients but the utilization of nutrients as well now that's just explaining a bit more about what uplift is i'm not going to get into a big discussion on biostimulants that's for another day but i said when you compare very simply there's a major element it's fairly obvious what a lack of it does there's a minor element, a micronutrient, and you can see just the impact that 
the lack of a bit of manganese has that's correctable for a single application, maybe five, six euros an acre. There's no question but nutrition is key to the, to the development of plants. In weather like this, when you've continued prolonged cold winds, cold rain, we've actually had kind of dry conditions induced upon the crop where that drying wind was preventing um, nutrients sprayed onto the surface of the ground to get into the plant. It all has a reduction in potential, a reduction in growth. So it's not just about fungicides, it's not just about growth regulators. They're protecting the yield we hope are there, but basically nutrition. That's what it's all about. If we get our nutrition wrong, if we can't alleviate stress within the crop, that's where yield dies away from us. I always make the point, if you once had a crop of wheat, I'll use my own example. If I go 200 foot that way, I go into a crop where two years ago the winter wheat produced 5.6 tonnes an acre at about 20% moisture. And if I go a couple of hundred metres that way, we get into another field where it's only down to last year 3.6 tonnes an acre. Two tonnes lost mainly because of drought and all the stress impacts that that had upon the crop. The exact same management, it was actually the same variety, everything was the same except for the weather and the stress factors it induced upon the crop. So stress, nutrition, managing one and satisfying the requirements of the other, that's what crop production is all about.